feel free to look around and we have um, information here on this table. This open house in Perryville, Missouri in July of 2010 drew prospective buyers from across the country. You can move it if you'd like. That's an easy customization. If you That's because the architect, Rocio Romero, and her line of prefabricated homes, the LV series, has garnered nationwide attention. This is an LVL, LVC, and LVM. LV stands for Laguna Verde. It's a town in the South American country of Chile where Romero's parents live. They gave Romero her first commission out of college to build them a home on a budget of just $35,000. Early on, I learned my first lesson that it's really difficult to bring a project in budget and out of that frustration and out of that eagerness to learn I started to explore and study prefabricated techniques um, because I was convinced that this was the future and this was the way to control costs and quality um, within architecture. Romero's architectural designs are among the latest incarnations of a concept that dates back more than a century in the U.S. These houses in the Metro East are a form of prefab home known as kit homes. More than 100,000 of them were sold by Sears Roebuck and Company between 1908 and 1940. Prefab is a term applied to several types of home construction. The houses are usually built with thousands of parts that were already cut or manufactured in another location, then transported to the home site. Interest in prefabs rebounded after World War II. 100,000 GIs returned each month to the worst housing crisis in U.S. history. Few homes have been built during the Great Depression and four years of war. The urgent need for affordable, attractive, single-family houses caught the attention of Chicago businessman Carl Strandland. He adapted principles used in construction of prefabricated service stations to residential housing. And in 1946, the Lustron home was born. Inside and out, Lustrons were porcelain enameled metal. No painting necessary, just soap and water to keep surfaces clean. Space-saving features built in throughout the houses made efficient use of compact floor plans. Lustrons were built across the Midwest, but while they were a critical success, the company that made them declared bankruptcy in 1950. A complicated mix of manufacturing and distribution costs, financing and politics contributed to the Lustron Corporation's demise. Fewer than 2,500 orders for Lustrons were ever filled, but many of those homes survive. I feel really lucky to be here. This space used to be closed up to where it was just a little square, but somebody at some point opened it up, and I'm, I'm glad they did. Kate Berger has lived in her Lustron home in St. Louis since 2008. New counters over here. I think they did a nice job, so I got some new drawers. And I've also got another bank of those original drawers. My father was an architect, and he went to Washington University during World War II. And so he started his career about the same time that these houses were being built. And he was definitely a, a mid-century mod guy. And so I'm happy, to, I'm happy to own the house for that reason. The beauty of uh, the houses that Ms. Romero is, is building um, is they, like this house when it was built, they are truly contemporary. They're the houses that are appropriate for the time in which they're built. And they're not trying to pretend to be anything else. But building and zoning codes in many communities prohibit manufactured or prefabricated homes for safety reasons. Rocio Romero says she spent a lot of time with building officials showing how the quality of her designs meet code just as traditionally built homes do. Romero also faced challenges lining up manufacturing partners. I was trying to convince manufacturers, soliciting them to manufacture my design, and they were all, all basically saying, you know, everybody that buys modern architecture is rich. You know, there's no 
interest. There's no demographic. There, there's, they didn't see the business um, opportunity within um, this niche. People expressing interest in Romero's homes span the economic spectrum. More than 70 LVs are complete or in some phase of construction across North America and one in Europe. At this particular open house were a number of individuals with backgrounds or interest in design. I've been admiring her designs for, oh gosh, years. Saw them first in a magazine, then I went online and saw it, and I follow it, and I just, I lust after it. I have a folder at home. It's, it's something, I, I say I, someday I'm going to live in a warm, flat place in a shoebox. Right there. There it is. I mean, I assume you did that mostly. I'm a graphic designer. I use my, my eyes in my work. I'm thinking of retiring either to Utah or New Mexico, and um, I've looked at a, a lot of prefab home housing, and uh, this seems to be the most affordable and the most beautiful at the same time. I'm an architect. I work in architecture in Wichita, and we'd seen the article for this, a house like this in Dwell Magazine. I really love the design. The house feels great inside. I love all the natural light. Can move right in. <laughs> my kids are out of the nest, so we need a small house, and I thought we'd buy a small lot, maybe somewhere on the lake, and build a small house. What do you think, now that you've taken the tour and heard the questions? I would say that I'm pretty impressed with this small house. I think the outside wall looks very attractive to me with the color on it. And I think the inside, open spacing, is a very good idea as well. And I think if all this can be combined into a cost effective, I will be very interested in this. My husband likes to say it's the little black dress that every woman has in her closet. It's that, you know, quintessential, simple, elegant, go-to thing. And, um, you know, I'm flattered by his analogy and, you know, I love to really be that, you know. It's, I think, a simple design that hopefully will, you know, stand the test of time and, and still be elegant and still be simple 20 years from now, 30 years from now.